I'm using MAC Face and Body in White to pale up my skin. I'm applying it all over my face, neck and most of the chest area. I'm not really expanding onto my shoulders and arms because I'm gonna go over these parts with water activated paints. Next I'm applying my black gel liner onto my outer and inner corner. I'm going quite dramatic and messy with this. I'm going to blend it out in a bit. I'm taking it underneath the eye as well and I'm building up as much as necessary. I can go over it two or three times just to get the depth of color that I want. I'm applying and blending simultaneously just so it doesn't get the chance to set. And now I'm moving on to a creamy champagne color which is quite shimmery and I'm placing it strictly on the center of the lid. Next I'm taking a dark purple eyeshadow and I'm just setting my gel liner into place. Wherever I put my black, I'm just putting purple on top. And next with a burgundy eyeshadow, I'm deepening up my crease, taking it all the way around my eye area just so I create my dark circles and also on the sides of the bridge of my nose. Next I'm picking up some lilac-y grey eyeshadow just to clean up a little bit, just to make the transition softer and use it to blend. I'm also slightly contouring my nose with it. And next with a spoolie brush, I'm picking up some concealer which I'm running all the way through my brows because I want to make them appear blonde or white and whatever rubs off on my brow bone is going to serve as my brow bone highlight some white pencil and I'm taking the same concealer onto my lashes top and bottom coating them from both sides I'm now using my contour brush to pick up some of the same lilac -y gray color and I'm starting off with my contouring I'm mainly contouring with this and then I'm building up with some of the dark purple eyeshadow I used in the beginning some concealer to highlight the high points of my face and with a powder brush which I'm dipping into some white eyeshadow I'm setting the entire face into place. I don't want anything to be shiny or greasy looking, I want it to be entirely matte. Next I'm applying some bright fuchsia blush on the high points of my cheeks and I'm not really bothering about blending it. And I'm also cancelling out the edges of my lips by applying concealer over them because I want to have sort of a small lip which I'm working on here. This is a pinkish berry lipstick. I'm creating sort of a heart-shaped lip and I'm blending out the edges with my finger just so they look softer. I'm going over the middle of my lips with a very dark purple lipstick. I'm blending it out with my fingers as well and now I'm drawing my little black heart on my cheekbone. I want to take my contouring all the way down my neck and onto my chest so I'm using the same dark purple eyeshadow which I used in the beginning of the tutorial for my eyes and I'm also highlighting my chest with a bit of concealer just so I look more bony or skinny. So I'm just highlighting and contouring the bones whether real or imaginary and I'm ready to move on to the outline of my dress. I went for a semi squared off neckline and I'm going over my shadow with my black water activated paint. I'm not exactly focusing on my lines being neat at this point, I just want to create the shadow so I'm blending out the black with some more black. I'm outlining the seams of my sleeve and I'm proceeding to color in my entire chest with some burgundy which I created by mixing some red and blue. Same goes for the actual sleeves. I opted for a lilac-y purple color which again I achieved through mixing red, blue and a bit of white which is why it doesn't come out the same every time I re-dip my brush in it. I'm just outlining my chest with a bit more black and I'm creating the lines where I want to create my stripes or creases however you want to interpret them. The left shoulder is always easier to do than the right one because I'm actually painting it with my right hand. I'm adding some more shadow onto my neckline and now I'm adding my light or sheen on the fabric, again however you want to see it, with some lighter purple which I created by just adding a lot more white onto my purple mix. I'm drawing some more lines on my dress and I'm intensifying the eyeshadow on my neckline just so it creates more contrast with my lace. Time for said lace. This is the first layer of my lacy front. I'm going to create about three or four layers in total. I find that this makes it look a lot more realistic and the density and opacity of the lace is also going to vary among all the different layers. So right now I'm going for this tear-like pattern for the second layer of my lace. While I'm at it, I thought I would also make the creases of my dress a bit more crisp and sheeny. This of course is just what I came up with. Feel free to create your own design. 
And I'm moving swiftly onto my third layer of my lace, which is just long dots, to be frank. And the reason I was applying all this shadow between my neckline and my actual skin was so that these little bits have the chance to stand out. A few more dots, which I always love. And now for the final layer of my lace, which is going to be the thickest one and the most opaque one. I'm really pressing hard with my white paint right now because I want it to look as though this is raised and prominent. I'm also going under it with some black just to emphasize the gravity of this last layer of lace. I find that mixing stark light with really dark bits in the final stages of the look really helps to intensify the contrast between them, so I'm adding some more black inside the hollows of my lace, and now I'm creating the shadow which is going to receive my black necklace. I'm just outlining it and filling it in with black. Next I'm moving on to my gem, which is going to be a round blue gem. I don't know what the blue stands for, I don't know what kind of gem it is, but I thought blue was pretty. So I'm filling it in with blue, adding some more texture to it, some more shine. Keeping in mind that the shine, aka the white, looks even shinier when it's based on dark. So I'm not resting it onto the blue, but rather I'm adding some more darkness around it. I'm also creating a shadow around the gem, just so it looks heavy and resting on my chest. And next I'm adding some texture onto my ribbon. There's really no one way to do this. You can add whatever texture you want. I just went for white bits. And again, I'm adding some more shadow around the ribbon, putting on my white wig and my white contact lenses. And there you have the finished Marie Antoinette's ghost Halloween look. Even though she was decapitated, I really didn't want to create that look. I just wanted to draw on my dress and my jewelry and make her sort of pretty if that makes sense but let me know if you enjoyed this look if you do recreate it make sure to show me on instagram i'm always thrilled to see your creations so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye